Hello all, Zysos here. We're doing another base tour. This time it's Oarstown. This was made to test the new dangerous rating that... the changes to the danger rating that were put in in the Sector 3 patch, although I didn't actually get around to finishing it until the mid-sector came out, which introduced the dynamic difficulty, which it kind of worked for that as well, for testing that as well. So it was built at a dangerous rating and like the top of dangerous and then when the dynamic difficulty came around it actually kept bumping between low brutal and high dangerous which means that this is actually a pretty good representation of what the top of dangerous looks like as far as difficulty goes because it was bouncing between that and the low end the the low end of brutal and the top of dangerous as for the actual map, it, it had 90 raid attempts with uh, 109 accolades, split 52 fun, 14 brutal, 19 ingenious, and 24 artistic. So the highest are fun and artistic, with ingenious not too far behind, brutal not too far behind that. Uh, has a kill ratio of 1.8, and with that, I think we'll just go straight into it. Okay, and we're back. So we're going to go over this map. So obviously this is a Shattered Peak base because it had just come out and that was more interesting than trying to use the environments that we already had. There are two tombs. Uh, they're both pretty much free. There's, they're marked with this as I normally do. Uh, one is just, yeah, arrows, leads up to the back. People normally find this one. The They normally catch on to this line of arrows pointing to it at some point. A lot of people have trouble finding this one. <laughs> Which is weird because you walk right past it. You also notice that I used the snow decal a little bit. Oh sorry, ice decals. These are ice decals. A little bit. To make it look like there's a little bit of runoff of snow coming onto the actual platform. And this was designed to look like a big hangar. Uh, most of the shell of the map is all made with this lab block, which I'm not the biggest fan of. It's a little bit too textured with a n not really enough colour on it, or like contrast on it, I guess. The fact that it's white with the white ice and the white background, it it kind of takes colour well, but like I feel like there's there's I would like a little bit more variation on here, considering it's such a highly textured block. I think the insulation's a lot more interesting. Although it takes colour really badly, because it's bright orange, it actually is fairly high contrast on the block itself, which works really well with its high texture. Using some of the like lab decals that came out, just placing them around to try and like create a feeling that this is a Arctic lab. Just what I was going for. So this is like the hangar of the lab. Then as you come into it, you start entering through the insulation, and you've got these fans that are, I assume, just part of the like internal heating cooling system. And then as you come in here, you start getting to the first traps. So you'll notice that it's very wide, which means that most of these traps can be fairly easily avoided. The the bomb trap only triggers if you walk straight down the middle, which a lot of people do. And then when they back up, uh, the bombs come out here and it gets to about here. You can back up to about here-ish and you'll be fine. But it catches quite a few people. And that should be there. Let's fix that one here. 
And yeah, so we've got two Ravagers here. This, These Ravagers were put here before the Battle Ready uh, Augment was added. So I don't think they won't have the Battle Ready, though they probably could. This one, this one here gets killed by bombs a lot of the time. Which is why I haven't put any mods on it, because I don't want to waste capacity on a guard that often dies. It normally will get hit by the bombs if it's going to get hit by anything. It, generally, these things won't hit any of these guards. Sometimes this can, particularly with a bounce. But I believe I've done taken some method measures to... Yeah, widens the angle. So this will push them up. Push the angle up, so they'll be less likely to hit the guard. And just burst beam. Because I want it to be faster, because I'm not expecting someone to stay in this room very long. I'm kind of expecting them to go straight into here. This here, the reason these aren't all lined up is because on the outside, the corner is running into... I think it's here. The corner is starting to run into this, and if I make it one further out, then there's no space on the outside for the shell that I'm putting in, which I didn't want to give up, so I just opted to, you know, make that one closer. In here, this room didn't really come up too much in the actual playthrough, but this here catches a lot of people because there's, if you try running really close to the edge, you could sometimes get caught by this, which is a standard just like quick launch. Uh, it's catch and release because it's supposed to drop people directly into the incinerator. Not as useful anymore because of the incinerator nerfs. I kind of wish I had a uh, impaler like there to catch people that try to jump back out, out of the incinerator. These two both have self-destruct. The way this generally works, the people al almost always go down the middle. I don't know why that happens. They go down the middle. Uh, they get seen by that. They shoot that. Uh, if they get caught by that, they come over here. If they shoot either of these, they're in danger. Uh, two seconds later, they have to shoot this one because it's one second. Then they have to get off this, and then they only have you know, about a second normally to get off to get away from the explosion, which can be quite difficult. So if you ever get caught by that, that's pretty bad. Obviously you can just like shoot the grappling hook and you'll be fine, but if you are trying to rush through, that can make that whole thing more dangerous. Another fan here for the like heating cooling system, and we have two... I believe these are just burning piston. They're just to try and block, and the reason they're burning piston is because of the way they're angled. Mo you'll actually be hitting the side a lot more than you'll be hitting the tip. Uh, this guard here is set up with a short leash and armor. The reason he is here is that he's actually path to go down here, up here, round here, and then down here, and then stand about here. With short leash, that means that he has access to about here, in this area, and up to about here. The short leash is 1.5 meters from anywhere on the path, on their path. So he won't be able to actually walk into these pistons. I think you might be able to, if you get him about here, you might be able to get him to walk into this one just barely, but generally, because of the pathing he takes, he will be here, and he'll be safe from these pistons because of the short leash. This one, I think it doesn't have that, but I'm not expecting you to drag it all the way back across here. And that one is more of a distraction, because I'm trying to distract you from the two bomb traps that are above, that are above you, and the bomb traps that go up here. The one on the right, if you're coming from the entrance, which is this one, goes forward. 
pushes forward. There is a little bit of a gap, so sometimes bombs will go the other way, but generally not, because they they just don't have the momentum for that. And the one on the left goes back and hits pretty much this whole platform. So if you go down the middle here, you'll trigger both, and that will be super dangerous for you, assuming you don't have the arc barrier. But if you know this, you can take either the left or right path, depending on what you are doing. Like, for instance, when I was running it, I knew that the left path was safe, because if I hug the left wall, the bombs get thrown backwards, not forwards. This here is to... This here, I don't think it was super effective, but let's just bring up the... Yeah, okay, we've got a few people. It's a bomb injector, that's a warmonger. Incinerator. Yeah, only one person actually got killed by the Impaler. But it is more of... It does kind of work as a distraction, so it's kind of just left there. Also, I think that was, like, the last trap. <laughs> Anything more would have pushed it over dangerous. Yeah, so this is a Flamewalker with an incinerator behind it. Dragon's Breath, I believe, is the only mod on that. And, yeah, Armored and Flamewalker. So, you can pull the guard out of that, but if you try doing that and didn't deal with the Impaler, which would be silly, you would die. But also, just sometimes people freeze up when they see something that they have to deal with, uh, which is what I was aiming for. But the... Impaler, uh, the incinerator at the end here is a little blocked off because of the way it's going. So this bottom left section is actually locked behind this ramp, unfortunately. So you can hug the left wall and get through here. But still, like, you just had the... The stuff up. Like, these are mostly from the incinerator. A couple bomb injectors, which we'll get to in a sec. So it's not, like, the least efficient trap setup, even with the issue with the ramp here. But I couldn't push that ramp any further back without pushing back, without causing issues further down the line with what I was trying to do. Uh, up here is the only second wave traps in the build. We have a bomb, ejector, and a iron claw. So the iron claw here is second wave and quick launch, because I want it to launch as fast as possible, even with the ner even with the not nerfs, the buffs to the quick claw in sector two. They like this is such a small gap for um, for the radar to be seen and go down. It was too risky to just let it go as at its normal speed, and 10 for quick launch is not a lot of capacity. Like, that whole trap costs 45, and what it does is, a lot of the time, people come in here and just try and run straight down, and what happens is, this goes, like, here and catches you about here, and stops you for a moment, which means that the bombs have more time to go down. Uh, they're just chaos in second wave. Um, they have more time to like bounce around, and sometimes like the person will deal with that. And but they lost a little bit of momentum, which means that instead of getting to like here and being safe, they get to like here and die to bomb ejectors. So the chaos bombs that have been coming out of here. Now, if you're being safe with it, you would just deal with these. But this is this was my uh, go at a speedrun trap because a lot of these other ones don't really work for that, and a lot of these, some of these other things like this room in particular, is pretty dangerous for people moving slow. So having this be dangerous for people moving slow, none of this is super. There's like because there's very few pistons besides like these ones. It's not super dangerous for speedrunners. So I put that in to kind of address that a little bit. And this here is just a little bit of a walk because I'm trying to delay you long enough that this second wave trap is already set up. And the last thing to talk about, I put an exit. 
it's marked. Uh, very few people saw it. Uh, I think just because it's slightly off of the the path, so a lot of people when they're going back the second wave, they'll go this way because they know they've already cleared everything. Whereas this is just a free exit, uh, and the arrows are just kind of pointing you to let you know how to easily get out because you can technically come up here and go this way, but. I think this way is just easier. This is a little bit more open. And you come out right at the entrance. Anyway, that's Oarstown for you. This will be on social for the foreseeable future. And I will see you next time.